Jai Gurudev, everybody in the world, all of you. So, Tommy Riverty will ask your question and we'll try to answer. So today's first question, is it possible that true peace and happiness can be established in this world free from all suffering or is it that this world of Maya will always be a place of suffering? Actually, happiness, everybody understand happiness in their own ways, you know. And uh, some people find happiness even being here itself, you know, in this world. Because within this world of Maya, the Lord also is hiding itself. And those who perceived the Lord through that veil of Maya, they attain real happiness. You know, Bhagavad Gita Krishna have spoken you know, in chapter 13, verse 25. He explained different uh, mode to attain Him. You know, he says those, some attain Him by the Self itself, and some attain Him by the mean of knowledge, and some attain Him by the means of Karma Yoga. 26 also he carry on explaining also those which is more in time sick they also attain him in a different ways so if we analyze that we see that uh, it have open ways for many to attain him you know in the great sages they have had that knowledge it's not only one kind of people can attain the Lord but Everybody is called to attain Him in whatever ways, from wherever they are. You know, some who sit in deep meditation, who have a calm mind, they have that inner vision. You know, they have that uh, connection with the Lord itself. Those through their intelligence, so don't think that when I'm talking about knowledge, I'm not talking about book knowledge, I'm talking about the inner knowledge where the mind and intellect it is in a calm state and the degree of detachment have been understood and being really put into practice. When one has that kind of understanding, then of course the path of uh, knowledge also bring one enlightened. Then we have those who can't meditate and can't do much actually. For them, they find happiness into serving others, in doing things, in forgetting firstly about themselves. Karma Yoga is about forgetting about yourself, in helping others also, being happy for somebody else. So you see, it's not only one way that one can find that true happiness, but within this we have to know what is the main aim. No, no. Like I have said in the question, it said that if we could find in this world of Maya, yes, we can, because the Lord prevailed over everything. And when we see that clearly and have that deep understanding that uh, He is the aim, then our mode of seeing things change. Then we realize that whatever we do, from wherever perspective, wherever we are, we are doing it for Him. And this is what we have to put deeply in ourself and keep reminding oneself. Very often it's easily forgotten because when we go into the world outside you know we get trapped into the beauty of the outside about things we easily forget about that that is where japam is important because when we are doing japam when we are chanting the name of the lord we are keeping reminding ourselves of his presence we are keeping reminding ourselves that whatever we do our life is for Him and we are His. So wherever you are, whatever you are doing, 
never forget about that. Keep chanting. Even if you don't have a mala, keep reciting his name. You know, here in Brindavan, wherever you go around, everybody will greet you, Radhe Radhe. Wherever you look around, on the tree, on the wall, everywhere, you will see it's written Radhe. So it is a reminder, you know, wherever you go around, you will see that there is a picture of the divine, there's uh, people will say Radhe Radhe, you know, you see it's written on the wall, as a reminder, always, but you should never forget about the divine, whatever you do, wherever you are, and that he is with you. Guruji, how can you ask forgiveness from someone that you have wronged if it is now impossible to see that person again? <clears throat> this is a question very often people ask. You know, if you would have, you will, let's say for, for uh, by any means that person have died, and you have that regret inside of you, you know, and you feel that you should have asked for forgiveness when that person was here alive or you can't meet that person again. The main thing is that you have to have that sincere regret inside of you. If you have that sincere regret that I should have asked forgiveness, knows that one thing is you have been forgiven. Firstly, one thing is that you have to learn to forgive yourself. Because when you make a mistake, you may say, yes, that person is wrong, or X, Y, that is wrong, but you are also part of that. That's why you feel this deep regret inside of you, you know, even if you say, yes, I should have asked for forgiveness, but that person is not there. But firstly, you have to learn to forgive yourself. Because part, one hand doesn't make sound by itself. It takes two hands to make sound. So a mistake is also part of, partly you yourself have made about it. So learn to find that forgiveness inside of you. Forgive yourself. Be at peace. Wherever that person is, whether it is alive or not, whether you can face that person or not, if you learn to forgive yourself, you will be free from that. Like that, automatically, forgiveness will happen. Because you see, very often you see people go around and ask, you know, they made mistake, and then they go and ask forgiveness. Oh, I'm sorry. They don't really mean it. And there's no power to that. Because you see, the tongue just talk. There's no bones in the tongue. It's very difficult to control it. So people just say, ah, I'm sorry, you know, then they go on doing the same things. Then there is no real forgiveness. Because when real forgiveness happens, you feel it inside of you. You know, when you sincerely regret, you see, you feel that pain inside of you, knows one thing is that you have been forgiven. Due to that pain that you feel, due to the sincerity that you are feeling inside of you, you your, your Atma has forgiven yourself. And automatically when you have forgiven yourself, God will forgive you. And the person itself, whether it, the person is alive or not, from, where, from wherever the Atma is, that forgiveness will come to you also. And this is the sincereness in asking, firstly, am I really forgiving? you know, that person, have that person forgiven me. First, learn to forgive yourself. Dear Guruji, what is the difference between having faith that everything is taken care of by Guru and God and the expectation that everything is being taken care of by Guru and God? <laughs> Look, when you have faith, you know that uh, Whatever you do, you know, the grace will be with you and it will be fine, however it is. There will be no deception, there will be no um, how say, feeling of uh, sadness that it have not been like that. You know that, yes, I have faith, Guru and God knows best, and whatever they give me, I accept it. But whereas when you have expectation, 
the different is that you say, yes, you know, I believe Guru and God is doing it, but it must be the way I want it to be. No, no. And when this doesn't happen the way you expect it to be, you will feel lots of uh, sadness. You will feel a lot of uh, frustration, anger. Yeah? So all this comes with expectation. Lord Krishna himself said, you know, the main things why the mind can't be calm is through because of expectation. When people have expectation, they put their needs first. They don't really trust. They don't really, they say, yes, we trust in Guru, we trust in God, but they don't really. They said, yes, we, we trust, but it has to be how I want it to be. So this is where frustration and unhappiness, anger arise. So when you trust really Guru and God, whatever come, there is complete acceptance into it. And when there is complete acceptance, you will see that everything will flow. Guruji, knowing that we live on the same time on earth as our dear Sadhguru, we sometimes may feel so blessed that it feels as if we are liberated already. Is it that? Or is it that actually it is our time where we have to work the hardest for our liberation? <laughs> no. You see, when you are living and that you have that grace to be with the Sadhguru here in this plane, in this time, it's a great blessing. It's not that you have to work very hard, but you have to just learn to listen. Very often it's very difficult to listen what the Guru is asking because it is very simple. Yeah. You try to complicate life and try to take life for granted. Try, try to take that relationship also for granted, you know. But it is not, uh, how say, in every life you have that opportunity. And if God have given you that opportunity, consider yourself really blessed. Not just consider yourself blessed and sit around, but consider yourself blessed and do everything possible to attain to that grace. Because the Guru has something. The Guru holds a treasure which is very dear to him. And he is ready to give it when he perceives that you are ready. Like I was saying, you know, in chapter 11, verse 10, Four of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Arjun prayed to Lord Krishna, you know, even chapter 3, he said, If you see that I am ready, please grant me the vision of who you are. You know, chapter, four, he's, uh, chapter 11, verse 4, he said, you know, that I don't know how ready I am. I don't know whether I can handle what I want to see. But you know. You hold that grace, and if you think that I am ready, if you f see that I am making my effort to be ready, and you see that I am worthy of it, please grant me that. The same thing, the Atma is asking the Guru also. Uh, you are here at that moment. It is a blessed moment itself, you know, we are living. But I have to make myself ready to receive it. Otherwise, you see, in life I have seen many people who, through grace of God, through many karmas from past, you know, through the samskaras from past, through the grace which they have done for many lives, they have taken shelter at the feet of the Guru, but they could not handle the Guru's grace. So, what you have to pray to make yourself ready by really study the teaching which the Guru has given. Really, this is a time where it is calling you to know about your path itself. Get deep and under, deeper understanding of why are you on this path. Why Bhagwan has called you to be firstly a Vaishnava. You know, firstly, above all, why are you a human being? What does that mean to be a human being? 
Yeah. And that's what it is important. Firstly, before you accept your divine self, you have to learn to accept your human self. If you can't accept your human self, how can you handle your divine self? When you look at your human side, you, look, you see all the flaws, you see all the negativity about yourself. Then you, you focus upon that, you don't want to change. How can you accept your divine self? The Guru is waiting when these things get transformed, when you, you are ready to handle something greater, and Guru will give it to you. And this is the grace that the Guru holds, you know, and this is the greatest treasure that he holds to make you ready to receive something more that you can understand with the mind itself. So, Jai Gurudev, everybody. Then you all much love and a big hug. <laughs>